Hi everyone, this is Tea Cozy Gaming. I am April and we are playing Beacon Pines. Now those who have watched the other videos, you know how crazy the story is getting. So we just found out that Beacon Pines, as we know it, isn't the real Beacon Pines. It's like a clone of the original Beacon Pines, which got frozen over and like what we met a dude who told us all this and it's it's crazy it's craziness like i don't it explains like there is cloning going on because we had the clipboards the raccoon dudes like they are clones which maybe the body and the dumpster earlier on maybe that was a clone that didn't quite cloned correctly or something I don't know I don't know what the body was quite yet I haven't figured that out but anyway the story is getting pretty wild so if you haven't grab us something to drink grab a snack get comfortable and let's dive back in to this craziness I am so excited to see what happens next because Seriously, things are just getting nuts. They're getting crazy. Chapter 6 The Source Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. Nat, that's his name. The dude. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed, and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest. Mm -hmm. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. I knew, I knew Kerr was shady Luca from the beginning. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, <gasps> uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. His dad's tree. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard, a headstone. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. You're here. All this time, I thought I was visiting you. Oh my gosh. But you've been here alone in the snow. Dad, I'm so sorry. They ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what do I do? There this was is no reply. Just snow covered silence. Hmm. Why'd you give me the slip like that? What if I couldn't find ya, you jerk? Eggie finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. Oh. Iggy, they... They stole his tree, Iggy. Yikes. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. We gotta hide. Ugh, oh, hazmats. 259k. Fall off distance, still good. Dude, did you hear me? I said 259. Sorry. You ever think about what we did here? We saved a whole town of people. Doesn't feel like it sometimes. What about everything we left behind? That's the grave of someone with a family. The people who loved them will never know the truth. The truth is overrated. He bent down to scoop up a snowball and lobbed it playfully. Hey. Don't be such a downer, dude. We took this job to change the world. Yeah. Come on. It's almost lunchtime. Ha. <laughs> Weirdo. Here I thought I was a jerk. These dinguses are out here literally dancing on graves. Luca stuttered through heaving sobs. Gosh. 
I thought I was visiting him. I thought he was with me. Not gonna lie, that's a bad break. Here's some advice. Eggy gave Luca a solid smack on the back of his head. Hey! Who's any of this helping? What? Sitting here in the snow, crying like some pushover? Who are you helping? Iggy, look what they did. They lied to everyone. Blah, blah, blah. Luca Van Horn, you're a lot of things, but you ain't no pushover. What did I tell you before? When some jerk comes at you, acting like a horse's ass? I should stand up for myself. Hell yeah! Her and his merry little band of clipboards pulled off this switcheroo for a reason, right? And that mentioned something about a source. Luca wiped his eyes with a sleeve. Whatever's at the source must be awfully valuable to perennial harvest. Sure would be a shame if something unfortunate were to happen to their precious source, wouldn't it? What do you have in mind? If it's small enough to steal, we snatch it. If it's too big to snatch, we smash it. And what if it's too big to smash? Iggy flashed a mischievous smile and cracked mm. his knuckles. I'm always up for a challenge. <laughs> I'm gonna make this right, Dad. I promise. Let's do this. Locate the source. Oh, jeez. Iggy's also awesome. He was a bully earlier, but he's awesome. It can get awful cold out there in those woods, Luca. Probably best you two stay put and conserve your energy. Help's on the way. Where's Rolo? Where's Mom? Did you kill her? Oh, heavens no. Do I seem like a killer to you? Iggy and Luca shared a skeptical look. <laughs> Well, do I? Aw, oh, shucks. Now that hurts my feelings. Screw that guy. Yeah, no kidding. I knew he was shady from the very beginning of this whole thing. I just looked at him and his Caesar Flickerman grin, and I was like, mm -mm, Cur bad guy. Oh, goodness. Okay, can we leave? So the source is somewhere here. Wait a minute. If this is the original town, then that means... Iggy darted behind a large pine and began digging furiously. He emerged holding a shoebox with a crude skull painted on its lid. <laughs> What's that? Long story. So a few years back, I, uh came into possession of some premium grade fireworks. Not the wimpy firecracker stuff they give kids. The good stuff. So why did you bury it under a tree? That's the long part of the story. You and Rolo were doing chores at Rolo's chicken coop. And you guys pissed me off for some reason or another. Luca rolled his eyes with realization. <laughs> he destroyed the chicken coop. No, you didn't. Iggy stifled a chuckle. Yep. I just wanted to give you guys a little scare. But, like I said, these were some primo fireworks. So I might have underestimated things. You blew up the chicken coop? I prefer to think of it as an incendiary, incendiary redecoration. Sorry, but you should have seen the looks on your faces. Rolo got grounded for months. Which is why I needed to stash the evidence and lay low. So I buried him under that tree. But when I came back for him later, they were gone. I figured some grown-up found him and tossed him. Icky triumphantly raised the shoebox. Turns out, it wasn't the fireworks that got moved. It was us. Unbelievable. It's just crazy that... That they duplicated the town and nobody knows. 
Like, how does nobody- how did they alter- did they alter people's minds? Like, how? Do you think this is a game? Newsflash, boyo. You're not a hero. You're a little brat who is in way over his head. A hero is just someone who refuses to give up. Comics these days are rotting children's brains. Everyone thinks they're a spaceman superhero. I was also I was always I was always partial to Hank Atomic myself. Is that so? Do you really think you have a chance against us? You have no idea how powerful we are. Prepare for blast off, loser. Yeah, loser. Hate you cur. Alright. like this whole stinking place. Okay, before I click on that, because it's very obvious I'm supposed to do that, can I go anywhere else? Is there anything else I need to interact with to get more charms? I haven't actually looked at my charms in a bit. Like, what? Crooked slap incendiary. Flight hard accept. Weep pungent break. Refuse struggle fight. Succulent cling strange. Rumble shame shit. <laughs> Indulgent smack change. Bull chill high. Junk ponder tickle. Look at this. Luca and Iggy inched up to the edge of the hole with bewilderment in their eyes. Arctic air breathed out of the cavern in heaving gusts. Echo! 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 Whoa. I can see why they wanted to move us all out of town now. But why would they dig a giant hole? I think this is it. This is the source? It's a dang hole? How do we smash a hole? Duh. Oh, it's much more than that, my annoying little friend. Kerr. Where's Rolo? I wasn't lying before. He's safe. Well, safer than you two, at least. Drats, it's cold. You just had to drag me all the way out here, didn't you? Mr. Kerr gazed down the abyss in contemplation. It really is something, isn't it? What did you do to our town? What is all of this? Well, that's a doozy of a question. This is the source. Where they collect the unrefined, uh... Kerr scratched the back of his head. Honestly, boys, I don't understand any of this well enough to explain it. Fact of the matter is, I'm not paid to know. What do you mean you don't know? Ain't you in charge? Oh, heavens no. My role is merely to flash a winning smile and manage various complications. Complications like us. You are a smart boy. His face contorted into a saccharine grin. It really is nothing personal. Some people are destined to strive for greatness, and others are simply obstacles along the way. Seems like you were destined to be a creepy lackey. The point is that we all play our part in life. Mine just happened to be a lead in the role of a lifetime. And you happen to be extras ready for your curtain call. We aren't giving up without a fight. Your smile is not going to be so winning after we're done with you. Now, boys, there's no need for melodrama. 
It makes even a professional such as myself embarrassed for you. Let's change the mood a bit. Kerr snapped his fingers. Scene change. <laughs> there. That's better. Deal with them. Iggy turned to Luca with a sly glance. Why are you smirking? Because I have a box full of fireworks and you don't. Iggy waved the box into the air, threatening to drop it down the hole. Stop. Let's not do something regrettable. Joke's on you. Regret is one of my specialties. <laughs> Out of curiosity, what would happen if I threw these in your precious hole? <laughs> Nothing. Nothing at all. You're a terrible liar. I'll have you know. I'm an exceptional liar. Up, 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 that's far enough. Piggy plucked a single bottle rocket from the box and held it up with reverence. Stop, you fool. Call off your goons. After a long pause, Mr. Kerr flung up his hand with frustration. Very well. You all can head back for the night. It's been a long day. I'll handle these two from here. <laughs> Mr. Kerr sighed into the frigid air. It's just us now, Iggy. You can put that down. What? Like this? With a nonchalant flick, Iggy tossed the firework into the hole. Uh, and kills us all. <laughs> Whoa. With a growl, Kerr <laughs> leapt at Iggy, crashing through Luca. Don't you? Oh. Iggy tried to twist away, but no. in the struggle, they both tumbled over the side. No. Luca dove forward, bracing Iggy's hand just before it slipped. Hmm. Save him, His save him. was made precarious by the cold, wet snow. No. He could see Kerr further down, clinging to Iggy's coat. You reckless child, what have you done? Luca, listen to me. Hold on tight and use the walkie-talkie to call them back. How, um, what channel do I use? It doesn't make a damn difference, they're always listening. If you do that, the clipboards will just haul us up and snag us both. The only way you get out of this is if Kerr's out of the picture. Just let go and save yourself. If he lets go, we both die. I don't want to die, but seeing the look on your face almost makes it worth it. <laughs> Iggy is badass. Iggy's awesome. Mr. Kerr, you've had a long life. Why don't you actually do something selfless and just let go? Mr. Kerr gasped with insult. Long life? I'll have you know I can still play 25. You should have heard me sing the part of Phileas Young. With a wild look in his eye, Mr. Kerr began to hum a proud melody. <laughs> I love that they're just hanging on for dear life and like, we're having this conversation. From dum dum, prompity dum dum. Wow, can you believe this guy? Luca's hand began to cramp. His voice began to crack. Don't let Iggy go. Kerr, just let go. No can do. If you want to save your friend, you'll have to save me too. Oh no. Luca, look at me. It's okay. Luca felt Iggy oh, loosen okay. his grasp. No, no. You aren't going to kill your friend like that, are you? Every muscle in Luca's body burned. I'm not his friend. Yes, you are. Nah, I'm just a no-good bully. Like you, Kerr. Niggy, no. Luca felt his hand slipping. And I told you what you need to do with bullies. I can't. It's your only way out of this mess. Two birds with one stone. 
It makes sense for us to fall together. Wackadoo's traveling packs. A calm settled over Iggy's face. Luca, let me do this. Iggy's voice was colder than the bitter air billowing from the chasm. Let me do the right thing for once. Oh my god. Luca had no choice but to... I'm like actually tearing up. Um... I can't. But what happens if I refuse? Then we all die. I don't I don't want to accept that. I'm refusing first. Luca had no choice but to refuse Iggy's request. He tightened his grip and reached for the walkie-talkie in his pocket. A wild delight crept onto Mr. Kerr's face. Oh, That's God. a good lad. Now, radio for help. Iggy begged Luca with his eyes one last time, but Luca pressed the button and called out. We... we need help. Mr. Kerr is in danger. It wasn't long before they were once again surrounded by clipboards. Mr. Kerr sighed with relieved frustration. There you are. You really are a worthless lot, aren't you? Mirror, now. A clipboard dutifully produced an ornate ivory hand mirror. And Mr. Kerr began preening his tussled hair. God, ah, this guy. that's better. Mr. Van Horn, I applaud your sharp thinking under duress. I'll put in a good word for you with the founder. A swarm of hands overpowered Luca. The last thing he saw before a cloth bag was pulled over his head was the defeated look on Iggy's face. I know, the I end. know. The end. Also, just want to apologize for the lag on in this game, real quick, because I know it's been laggy in a few episodes, and it's just I'm playing on a really old laptop, hoping to get a new computer this year. Like, hoping, fingers crossed, I do. Um, so I apologize for the lag. But oh my gosh, I know, I know I wasn't supposed to refuse his request, but I can't, I, I couldn't, I couldn't in good conscience choose to let him die first. Um. I know I just doomed all of us, but... Mm, I think this was one of those times where doing the right thing was the wrong thing. I know, and I know that. And the thing is, I know, but... Jeez. Oh, Fine. I just hate this. You know, maybe, maybe if I accept, though, maybe something happens and they don't fall down to their death. Luca had no choice but to accept Iggy's request. With a quiet blink, Luca watched a teardrop sail down into the howling void. As his fingers slowly gave up, he met eyes with Iggy. Good. <gasps> no! The two silhouettes were swallowed by darkness. Oh my god. This is the fire Hell of a goodbye, Iggy. Luca, you should really step back. What? Quickly. Curious. Ah, but of course. Those fireworks of Iggy's must have been just the right amount of energy. We should get out of here before perennial harvest arrives. Not until you told me what just happened. Your friend's sacrifice just saved this town. For a little for a little while anyway. How? Tempest liquamine is a peculiar substance. It can change the relationship between matter and time itself. But doing so requires unfathomable energy. 
In a closed system, that energy can only come from its surroundings. A useful side product of this property being, by adding precisely the correct amount of energy to it, one can create a cryogenic cascade. So the gunk makes things cold and the fireworks made the hole freeze over? That's one way of putting it, yes. As dumb luck would have it, the fireworks weren't strong enough to generate a runaway reaction. I shudder to think what would have happened in that case. We have some idea what that would look like. Mm. It will take them a good while to safely break through and access the source again. If you know all this stuff, why haven't you been helping? I have been, in my way. Each one of us has our role to play. Iggy's role, it turns out, was to buy us precious time. Mine has been to observe and wait. Wait for what? You. Me? Why? What's my role? A fierce twinkle flashed in Nat's eyes. Luca Van Horn, you are going to save the world. Oh, I'm still sad because Nat I turned and walked west. No, I hate it. I hate it. Uh, cozy, cozy game. Cozy death dying game. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, there's got to be another version of this where he doesn't die. There has to be. Oh my gosh, I'm going to save Dumb the world. Founded. Luca followed behind him, trudging through the snow. Every step taking him further away from everyone and everything he knew and closer to destiny mm. to be continued in beacon pines pines harder what revenge served cold second times a charm what <laughs> wait that's it this ends with a crummy cliffhanger just when it was getting good? Yeah, that's what I'm, yeah. That's what I'm thinking. That's my thought exactly. I was even starting to like Iggy. Me too. I love Iggy. No way. I refuse to be associated with some never-ending parade of sequels. Yes, yes. Let's go back and find something more definitive. <sighs> It's a whole thing. Okay. Gosh. Yeah, Iggy... He, like, he's a bully, but... I mean, oftentimes bullies have been bullied. Or they have bad, you know, home situations. Or things that have happened to them that make them bully others. They're not bad people. They're, it's just... Ugh, and Iggy's definitely not. So, Iggy, Iggy, Iggy... <laughs> Iggy definitely redeemed himself. Um, okay, what was this? Now we're going here. Okay, so we're back in the basement with Mr. Tolliver. They'd run the classic good cop. I think I did chill cop last... No. Oh, I did hard cop. Good cop. Sly cop. Um, it's good chill cop. They'd run the classic good cop, chill cop interrogation. Let's see what that gets us. I'll handle this. Just gotta play it cool. Luca walked calmly to the light switch, flicking it off and on a few times. Mr. Tolliver shook his head, gathering his wits. Golly, I sure got my bell rung. He looked over to find Luca, who returned a calming grin. Sorry, Mr. Tolliver. This was all a big mistake. Luca, what's going on here? Why do you have me strapped down? No one's fault, really. Rolo just got a little startled. Rolo's here. Rolo and Beck emerged from hiding to give a timid wave. Well, all right. Mistakes happen. You kids gave old Hiram a good scare. Let's just get me out of these ropes and call it even. Luca glanced over to Rollo and Beck, who replied with skeptical looks. 
Mr. Tolliver, why are you in my grand's basement? I'm here to help, of course. Help with what? What's my gran up to? If you'll just cut me loose, I can show you. How do I know we can trust you? Mr. Tolliver exhaled with disappointment. Luca, have I ever done wrong by you? No. And since your grand moved to town, haven't I been nothing but welcoming? Yeah. So why would I turn my back on your family now? We can trust him. It's just... All this stuff seems pretty weird. A board with names of people from town? An archive of my dad's old disturbing patient notes? Luca gestured to the corner. Barrels of explosives? I can explain everything. You just need to untie me. You kids deserve an explanation. Luca looked again to Rollo and Beck. This time they shrugged. Luca began to slowly loosen the bindings. Mr. Tolliver gently rubbed his wrists. That's a good lad. This all makes sense in time. He edged imperceptibly toward the stairs as he spoke. Wait, you're not gonna run, are you? I literally just said two minutes ago, not even two minutes ago, that we could trust you. You see, this town has secrets, Luca. A very dark past indeed. Before the kids had even noticed his movement, Mr. Tolliver was at the light switch. A past that must be brought He punctuated to... his final words by flicking the switch and rushing up the stairs. Light! Son of a... Beck darted to the wall and turned back on the lights. It was too late. Rolo confirmed what they all heard. He just locked us down here. Mr. Tolliver's muffled voice came from behind the door. You can't trust adults. That That is the moral of this story. You can't trust adults. Because none of them, none of them, like, Kerr is messed up. The mayor is, you know, something was weird with him. Mr. Uh, Nuncreed. What a creepy perv. Mr. Tolliver. I was like, oh yeah, we can probably trust him. He might be like the one adult in the game we can trust. Now we're locked in a basement. So that's great. I wasn't lying, you know. This is for your own good. You kids just keep tight down there. And let the adults handle this. They look to be bewildered at each other. Play it cool, huh? Not now, Beck. <laughs> they heard the staccato thump of quick steps exiting the house. The kids looked down in resignation. This isn't how it goes in Hank Atomic. <laughs> For some reason, they'd always assumed it was up to them to save their town. Luca opened his mouth, hoping to conjure some magical words to make this right. Only a hollow croak escaped. The end. I knew playing well, it chill we wasn't... We certainly aren't going to find a grand resolution to our tale locked in a basement. Back to the drawing board. Yeah, no, I, I had a feel, feeling that doing chill wasn't going to get me very far, but that's kind of part of the reason I did it first. Um, so let's go back and, and be sly. Because that's just smarter. Okay, sly. They'd run the classic good cop, sly cop interrogation. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leaving Beck to her task. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. What? What's going on here? You, you're that Modewell girl. Please, call me back. Sorry about all this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. It seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are. Juniper sent you here? Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. 
She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Gran. This was going to be easy. You know how Juniper is with her precautions. Operation Sparkplug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you needed some backup. But she sent a child? What better way to avoid prying eyes? Who would suspect a kid? I suppose that makes sense. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. That had to be uncomfortable. A little, yeah. But you understand. We never know who to trust in this town. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Very true. So it turns out we're both here we're both here too. Beck twirled her hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroy the evidence. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep, the old gal is nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff in agreement. She sure is. Can't blame her, though. If anyone were to find out that we're going to destroy the source, well, we both know how bad that might be. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. Mm -hmm. You're sure you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. Good. There is one more loose end I'll work. go work on. Loose end? Oh, it's nothing really. The other day I had the radio on scan while restocking the candy shelf. And wouldn't you know it, I intercepted an odd phrase in a perennial harvest transmission. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismissed it. Said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know. So we have a password and know where to put it? It's gotta mean something, right? Good thinking. You should probably go work that out. I've got this under control. That's a relief. Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. Oh, Tolliver's a squirrel. I just noticed a squirrel tail. I wonder if he's the daughter of of the little girl squirrel we saw earlier. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. <laughs> with a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. Ha, sucker. You guys catch that? Sure did. This whole time, Mr. Tolliver's had a candy shelf. But all he ever sells us is apples! Beck <laughs> blinked slowly in disappointment. <laughs> the password, Rolo. Well, sure, but one things are, once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. Fine. In the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. He said he heard a password on the radio. Any good spy transmission is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. We just need to find the hidden meaning. Hmm, okay. What's another word for underground? Buried? Covered? Could it be a cover-up? Maybe it's one of those each letter is a number thingies. So you would be 21. N would be 14. D would be... Oh. It's an anagram. Nun Creed's dur <laughs> Drugstore. Oh my Luke gosh. and Beck looked at Rolo with amazement. Well, he is wearing the detect bat for a reason. Rolo, that was incredible. Well, it's neither that it's e either that or Kren's nude rug store. <laughs> yeah, I think you were right the first time. How did you do that? What can I say? 
I love snipers. Well, I guess we know where to go next. None creed. None creed. Duh. I know he I knew he was the worst of the worst. The worstest of the worstest. He's terrible. I don't remember your name. You scared me half to death. Sorry. You kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? Nope. He's got me waiting around like the last slice of pie. I swear that man would be late to his own funeral. Goodness. <laughs> I always get stuck going across that bridge. Perennial harvest door. There's, there's light in there. Oh, what is going on? You're late, Augustus. Sorry, sister. Was caught up with work. Work? You? I had a few more details to lock down for the festival. Oh, what do you have to report? What is this insipid town festival really about? I think- Gus looked around nervously. I think Mr. Kerr really does just want to do something good for the town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't just pull- I didn't pull strings installing you as mayor so that you could make friends. Your job is to help me figure out what Kerr and Perennial Harvest's true intentions are with this town. We have a responsibility. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me. This was our father's town. He's gone, Eris, and he isn't coming back. Father left us with nothing but problems. Mr. Kerr came here and offered to help us. We accepted that help. We didn't agree to them turning Father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground. That is just a temporary arrangement. The glow can be seen from our damned backyard. They are dumping their nasty little secrets on us. When this all inevitably goes wrong, who do you think will be blamed? Eris's cry hung in the air. We have a new choice to make now, sister. This town is going to change, whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be a part of the, that future, or be forgotten in the past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus. But you will always just be a Gus. Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. It's getting late, children. Kerr is not a good guy. The mayor thinks he is. The mayor... I think the mayor just wants to do the right thing. I think of all the adults in this town, actually the mayor is probably the most, like, normal. He just is kind of living in his father's shadow, and he probably does want to do what's best for the town. And he doesn't realize Kerr is a sleaze, so he thinks that Kerr wanting to, like, advance things and move forward is a good thing for the town. I feel bad for him. But anyway, I think I'm going to go ahead and stop there, because a lot happened. I'm still... I know, I know it's been erased. Icky is currently alive in this timeline. But still, that... That hurt. That hurt a little. That hurt a little bit to uh, to lose Iggy in that way. So I'm hoping that this time we don't lose Iggy. We are on our way to see Nuncreed, who I hate, and I always knew he was up to no good. So next time should be a pretty fun episode because I think we're we're starting to get to the to the end here. Maybe I'm not sure how long this game is, but I feel like things are really starting to come to a climax. Uh, so, yeah. We'll see. Another episode, maybe two episodes, depending. Uh, but either way, I will be wrapping this up pretty soon, I think. Uh, if you've watched so, so far with me, thank you so much. Um, subscribe if you would like to see more. 
and I will see you next time. Bye.